to work. Uh, they don't want them to fail to work if somebody f- sets a cellular phone down right next to it, uh, which can happen. I don't think that most people understand that EMP is a result of something nuclear. Well, that was the terminology used for many, many years because the popular media now is using the term EMP very generally. It is confusing a lot of people. But I don't know what we can do about that. No, so explain it. Explain the phenomenon. Well, the word, the words, electromagnetic pulse, just mean uh, an electromagnetic signal that that starts at zero, goes up to a high level, and then comes back down again uh, to zero. Whereas a radio wave is what we call continuous wave. It is always uh, uh, propagating away from the antenna and into every home and and, uh, anywhere someone might have a radio, and then you pick up that signal. And the information in in a radio signal, it's continuous at a certain frequency, but it's, it's amplitude may be modulated. Uh, that's why it's called AM, amplitude modulated, or frequency might be modulated, FM. And that's where the radio is able to pull the information, the music, or the words out. Uh, but those are continuous waves, and they're very low level, by the way, um, typically, say, on the order of one volt per meter, uh, whereas EMP comes from a nuclear burst, the electromagnetic pulse from a nuclear weapon, and it can be on the order of tens of thousands of volts per meter. So it is much, much larger. And even though it's only a single pulse, that can get into your electronics and damage it. Uh, it doesn't need to have a continuing pulse to uh, to cause damage. Are you protected yourself where you live to the extent that your equipment, your home, your office... Has we, have, devices? Uh, we have emergency supplies. Uh, we have, uh, you know, we have our electronics on UPSs and so forth. But the problem is that unless uh, the power grid is protected, which it is not, uh, it really doesn't doesn't much matter. You know, you can have electronic equipment, uh, and and now we, of course, we back up our our data and our information, and we do a lot of that on. On, on CDs and DVDs, and that's a very good way to protect because uh, the EMP will not affect those. The, um, they will not affect uh, information on CDs and DVDs. So that's a good way to do it. But we're not an operational, we're a research organization, so we don't have any uh, responsibility or actions that we have to take in the next minute or two minutes after an attack. Um, you know, we would be like everyone else. Uh, we wouldn't be able to continue to work, but we wouldn't have any customers that could continue to work either. This is a very sensitive question I'm going to ask you, but it just came into my mind. Sure. But do you think that the presidents of countries, not only here but in other places, are set up on a different grid system or a different energy supply system distinct from what we're all on? I would think in places that is certainly the case. I I have no idea um, with regard, say, to the White House. Um, You know, I have have read, I guess, that there is some sort of a, well, I shouldn't say I've read, I've seen on TV, so it may not be true, that there is some sort of a protected area uh, near the White House. But uh, I think uh, in places where people might go, like bomb shelters and things like that, there would be uh, backup power there. The question would be... How long can it go? Yeah, that's right. And and that's a very good question. I think typically, uh, like one or two weeks is usually uh, what has been built in because that was the expectation of how long it would take to get back up to speed afterwards. So I, I, you know, I, I doubt... Uh, that, um, you know, anyone has at any of these facilities would have six months or a year. Uh, You know, I think that's just outside of the range of expectation. It could be done, of course. But uh, I guess the point would be why. What would be the purpose? Um, You know, if you had, if you only provided that for the leadership, uh, but there was nothing to lead, 
left, uh, it wouldn't make any sense. Right. No, I was just wondering, one would think that FEMA would have that taken care of and that presidents and their administrations would have that taken care of. I think, you know, I, I don't know the details, but I'm, I think there are places uh, that they would go. I, I recall reading in the newspaper when there were some uh, airplanes that were in the wrong area near uh, the White House. They actually did an evacuation in one case, but I don't know where they evacuate to. Uh, you know, I, I'm sure, I guess, like, like you said, I'm sure FEMA has that information. Um, what is your intent in the next year? What would you like to see happen? Well, we're starting to do, um, in fact, we have several projects right now where we're starting to do uh, prototype development uh, showing how we can uh, develop protection methods that are not high cost, the costs are reasonable, uh, and implement them in in several cases to show how easy it is to do. Uh, and we think uh, this is a way forward because, uh, uh, you know, a lot of people ask the question that you ask, well, okay, we're ready to go do something, what do we do? And the problem is that there are a lot of alternatives, but the cost could vary tremendously depending on which one was selected. So we, we would like to make it a lot easier to determine the most cost-effective ways uh, to get things done in terms of protection. And we think with some demonstration projects, uh, that will will be a, a good way to, to get it done. Are there any you can talk about, or are they all pretty much private right now? No, I can't really talk about Okay, okay. Uh, you know, the, other than uh, um, there's a lot of interest from the electric power grid in Congress right now. Uh, that I can mention. The Department of Homeland Security has... Uh, uh, several people, including the chairman, uh, uh, Representative Thompson from uh, Mississippi, and Yvette Clark from New York. They are um, the ranking uh, chair and vice chair for the Department of Homeland Security. They have become interested in this issue and are trying to figure out if they can push the power industry uh, as the most concerned uh, infrastructure to start doing something about the problem. And to that end, I believe the Federal Energy uh, Regulatory Commission, FERC, and the uh, North American Energy Reliability Corporation, NERC, uh, are both looking at uh, moving forward if they can. But, you know, they're dealing with a power industry that has many, many companies, and each of those companies has to deal with different states to regulate their rates. And so it's a very complicated situation. But at least uh, there's uh, interest in Congress that is trying to push things forward. Are you open to helping other governments around the world prepare for EMP? Well, we are to the extent that it's in cooperation with our government. I mean, we can't... uh, you know, there is a national security aspect to this, so you know we wouldn't um, uh, we wouldn't uh, do that without uh, some uh, approval from uh, our government. Of course, I mean, if it were an ally and our government approved, certainly we would do that. That's interesting. It, it by the way, it is somewhat easier in other some other countries. Well, that's why I was thinking that maybe there, you know, sometimes. There are bureaucracies and there are time lags and delays that are against the greater good of what can happen. And so you start in places that are more fertile to get the model up and get it going and get it set up. And is it proper for the U.S. to say, well, sorry, we're going to delay the thing, but we're also not going to allow you to make it available to protect the people of, let's say, Europe? from maybe a geomagnetic storm or some type of uh, terrorist attack there, et cetera. I don't understand that aspect of the national security part that you well, just communicated. Well, no, it's just, it's just the... Um, you it, mean like as a courtesy? What I was referring to was the possibility that, you know, for instance, for geomagnetic storms, our company uh, worked uh, uh, with uh, John Kappeman. He was an employee of our company at the time. Uh, we uh, worked to evaluate the threat of geomagnetic storms to the... Uh, power grid in uh, in England and Wales, uh, and uh, there was only one power grid in control of the, t- the entire 
uh, grid instead of 150 in the United States. Wow, that's great. So we only had one to deal with. Now, 